Even though Arbany Gabriel's reign ended up lasting only around 10 months, I still thought that it was worthy of discussion just because of the pure scandal of it all. In fact, Arbany's reign started with a thick cloud of scandal hanging above it. But lover or hater, you can't deny that she has managed to keep stiff upper lip and keep it pushing forward. But before we get into all of the cheating allegations and all of the suspicious circumstances surrounding Arbany's reign, let's get into who she is as a person. Arbany was born on the 20th of March 1994 in Houston, Texas to a Filipino father and American mother. Her father's full name is actually Remigio Bonzon Gabriel and it's an amalgamation of his first and middle name that resulted in Arbany's name being what it is because let's face it she has a bit of a strange name when you see it at first. She very much grew up binationally, visiting the Philippines during her years as a child. But more than anything, Arbany's passion has always been in the fashion world. I mean, Arbany graduated with a degree in fashion from the University of North Texas. There are literally hundreds, if not thousands probably, of videos and images of her creating some pretty fabulous fashions all over the internet. I just love to see the woman at work. I mean, I truly believe that people are at their most enchanting when they're doing something that they truly enjoy. Arbany's first attempt on the road to becoming Miss Universe started when Arbany competed at Miss Kima USA 2020. She was in the top five. Kima is a city in Texas and in the USA women usually have to win a smaller county title before being able to compete for a state title such as Miss Texas USA. She went on to compete at Miss Texas USA 2021 anyway as Miss Harris County, but she was first runner-up to Victoria Himujosa, who represented McAllen. Victoria actually ended up in the top eight at Miss USA 2021. The next year, in 2022, Arbany finally won Miss Texas USA, representing Friendswood. Arbany thus was able to enter Miss USA 2022. Miss USA 2022 was the 73rd edition of Miss USA, and it was held in Reno, Nevada on October 3rd, 2022. As usual, 51 stunning women representing the 51 states of the USA competed for the title of Miss USA, and with that, the privilege of being the USA's representative at Miss Universe. Arbany managed to glide through every stage of the competition effortlessly and was ultimately determined to be Miss USA 2022 and was thus appointed to represent the USA at Miss Universe 2022. Her victory was very short-lived, however, because just it seems like right after she completed her final walk, basically, a scandal of biblical proportions would arise which would affect both her and Miss USA and Miss Universe. In fact, many supporters noticed how consistent seemed to vacate the stage while Arbany was receiving the title and taking her first walk as the new Miss USA. This is considered disrespectful in the pageant world and alerted fans quite early on that all was possibly not well between Arbany and some of the other Miss USA contestants. Without some of the contestants felt that Arbany had an uncommonly and unprofessionally close relationship with some of the judges and sponsors of the Miss USA pageant. Most vocal amongst the Miss USA contestants were Miss Montana USA Heather Lee O'Keefe and there are some videos she posted explaining things from her perspective. Welcome to pageant drama TikTok. Miss USA 2022 was crowned two nights ago on Monday night. I competed I didn't win, Miss Texas won. The drama all started when one of the huge major sponsors posted a video almost immediately after this girl won, showing her at their resort having this luxury vacation, which is supposed to be part of the Miss USA prize package. There's no way that she was already flown out there and is having all of these treatments. So it's pretty clear that this video was pre-recorded and she was flown out there about nine weeks ago for this experience. The receipts for that were posted in my last video, but this one is going to expose even more tea on the Miss USA organization. First, I want to make it clear, Texas wasn't on the 50 contestant trip to Cancun with us because she wasn't crowned yet. She and Colorado both weren't at the contestant retreat back in June, but Colorado didn't get an, a special trip to Nizuk 
Texas did though. Ever since Texas was crowned a couple months ago, she has been shown favoritism by the Miss USA organization through their businesses that are also all owned by the same woman who owns Miss USA, who owns the Miss Academy, who owns the Miss brand, which are all very closely knit. Here's a screenshot from an Instagram story showing the new Miss USA winner and the owner of the Miss USA organization doing her hair. It's not clear when this photo was taken, if it was before or after competition, but I can tell you this is the room where all the contestants were getting their hair and makeup done before the competition. And here's a screenshot from the pageant. This is the pageant owner, Crystal Stewart, with one of the major sponsors. Again, this is the sponsor, Pageant Doc, who owns the med spa. Who reposted Texas all during Miss USA week. He only reposted her stuff on his Instagram. A sponsor is promoting one of the contestants before she even won. And another one. Here's her swimsuit walk posted by him. To be clear, he does also sponsor the Miss Texas USA pageant, but I think that gets a little weird that there's a sponsor nationally and they only also sponsor one state pageant out of 51, including all 50 states in DC. I'm going to be going live on Instagram later, so make sure to follow me there too. And I'm going to be doing like a QA and a where y'all can ask me your questions and I'm just going to answer them live. So follow me there and follow me here too for part three, four, five, however many we need. Let's start with what most pageant winning reaction videos look like. Soft, happy, singing. I want to make it clear we are not trying to bully Arbany and please do not send her any hate don't harass her none of that I fully support Arbany because if I were in her position and I was the favorite I don't know what I would do either I can't blame her I probably would do the same thing and accept the favoritism we really can't blame this girl and it's really sad because her performance was amazing and she probably could have won fair and square, but the issue is the organization seems to allegedly have set her up for this win because it fit the organization's agenda and that's the issue. The issue is not with Miss Texas Arbany winning, the issue is with the alleged corruption of the Miss USA organization. Was Miss USA rigged? I don't know. I'll let you be the judge of that. Here are the facts. Miss Texas USA was allegedly flown to and from Cancun mid-July via the Miss USA sponsored airline United. She was the only contestant to receive this special kind of treatment and receive a solo trip to Cancun. Mia Beauty is the med spa in Cancun at Nizuk Resort and Spa, while Mia Plastic Surgery is the Houston-based med spa. Both are affiliated with one another, um, but they are different, and they are both sponsors of Miss Texas and Miss USA. Miss Texas has been a client at the Houston location since early 2021. We have these receipts here. I mean, they're all over the internet. We have the screenshots we have the receipts um mia plastic surgery miss academy and the miss brand have been partners for over the last year and a half there are rewards and sponsors for more than ten thousand dollars worth of services from mia plastic surgery included in the miss texas prize package every year however that prize package does not include a private trip to cancun and last year's miss texas usa did not get the same kind of treatment and nor did any of the other miss usa contestants this year Last but not least, one of the surgeons, actually the main guy at this place, was a judge for the Miss USA costume contest. Here he is. Here are the receipts. We have them all. Many other Miss USA 2022 contestants also spoke out via Instagram stories, including Mira Bonsley, who represented South Carolina and ended up unplaced, KK Clint Vincent, who represented Alabama and was also unplaced. Holly Haynes, who represented Georgia, also spoke out on Instagram stories. Scarlett Ramirez, who represented Massachusetts, also had something to say, as did Lizzie Newts from Porvath, Alexandra Lachman from New Jersey, and Elise No from Kansas. 
Elise No posted a very cryptic story, but most of the women who made the top 16 never spoke about Miss USA 2022 at all. As you can see, the most vocal participants were those who ultimately failed to place. Scandal became so huge that the Miss Universe organization ultimately had to launch an investigation into the allegations that the contestants were making, especially those with regards to um, the owner of the Miss USA pageant, Crystal Stewart. Things were already not going great for former Miss USA 2008 Crystal Stewart. I mean, she was being investigated for favoritism, but her husband, who was vice president of the Miss USA pageant, had not been involved since early 2022 because so many screenshots of him allegedly trying to start sexual relationship with pageant girls over the years had come out. Ew. <laughs> Days after Arbany was crowned, obviously she was on this media tour, which is custom for a newly crowned Miss USA. Um, but the only difference is she wasn't asked the nice flowery questions that newly crowned pageant queens usually get asked when they are on their media tours. No, 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 because this was in the midst of the rigging allegations coming out and she actually had to answer and speak on that it was not rigged because i would never enter any pageant or any competition that i know i would win there's been a lot of times where title holders will work with sponsors for miss usa before the competition the sponsor did not fly me out i flew myself out so that photo shoot happened the day after i won crystal was there of course and she stepped in and actually did my hair it's just kind of a coincidence that i am from texas and a lot of maybe the organization team are as well former miss usa 2021 l smith also came to arbany's defense I've been trying to decompress from Miss USA. I've muted every single pageant page. I've unfollowed pageant pages. I have turned my phone off and still I'm getting notified, emailed, messaged, called about all of this. So here's what I have to say. I understand that I won Miss USA last year and so I am very grateful for that opportunity and some people may not agree with me, but this is my perspective. I was just at the 2022 pageant and with that being said, right now, all I feel is concern and pity for Arbany and here's why. I understand how isolating it is to win Miss USA and I also understand what it is like to have your class try and discredit your win and say that they are attacking the organization and not you. Last year my class attempted to say that the organization favored me and they came up with all of these different claims. I then debunked all of the claims to prove them wrong. This class is doing the same exact thing to Arbany. There is not one person in the pageant world and not one person in that class who did not realize that Arbany was the clear front runner for the Miss USA title from the t moment that she won Texas. She was the clear front runner, not saying she was the clear winner, she was the front runner. It was hers to lose and she needed to perform at Miss USA and she did exactly that, y'all. The biggest claim I have seen is the Nizuk video. And from my understanding, this is what happened. Dr. Fee was a sponsor of Miss Texas. Arbany was Miss Texas. Dr. Fee's products are at Nizuk and he's also friends with the owners of Nizuk. So he took his title holder to Nizuk and they filmed with the beautiful woman. That video was going to be posted at some point, whether Arbany won or not. And just the optics of her winning and them saying congratulations and releasing the footage looks terrible. I will admit that. But the ill intent was not there, if you guys understand what I'm saying. There was no favoritism shown in terms of the video. You guys have taken that and ran, and it is amazing to me, the power of social media and the people who actually do not understand the behind the scenes. I have so much love for the class of 2022. You guys were amazing. I got to hang out with you a ton, um, but my perspective is changing because as of right now, it seems very disingenuous on social media for a multitude of reasons. One, I understand that you guys took Arbany out of your class group me. Why? Two, I understand that I watched a live last night of a title holder and she was so excited about the amount of people that were watching her live. And she said, never have so many people paid attention to me, basically. And it seemed very disingenuous. I understand that there are going to be frustrations about losing some a pageant that you've worked diligently for, y'all. I understand that. And I understand that there may be frustrations about the fact that you guys had to pay for t-shirts. I thought that was crazy. I'm going to be honest. But the fact that y'all did not congratulate her after winning Miss USA, walked off the stage, took her out of the group. I mean, that poor girl right now is going through it. And for everyone who's saying that it's not impacting her, you're completely wrong. This is impacting her mental health. And I think if you have concerns about the organization, reach out to the organization directly. Reach out to Paula. Reach out to Crystal. But this whole social media bashing, there's people under my comments calling me a fraud because they think I'm Arbany. And just imagine how she feels. And I'm not even, I'm not even involved right now. So guys, just think. Think. 
the end of the day it would all come down to the Miss Universe organization's investigation into the situation and their ultimate decision regarding that. Hey guys, I realized it's been a minute since I posted a Miss USA update and I'm getting ready so I figured I would do a little get ready with me and update you guys on what's going on. We are pretty sure that the law firm is done with their end of the investigation and they sent their findings to MUO, the Miss Universe office. Um, because Amy, the CEO of Miss Universe, sent an email out to the Miss USA contestants asking to meet with us next Tuesday, I think, December 27th, but a lot of the girls were upset because they promised us answers before Christmas, so they were demanding that they meet with us before then and keep their promises, which would be great. Um, but they said there's no way they can meet with us beforehand, so I'm hoping that they make their decision this weekend based on the findings that the law firm sent them, and then we are going to have our meeting on Tuesday afternoon. I will give another update next week after our town hall meeting with Amy. Not really sure what that meeting is going to entail. So far, Crystal and the Miss brand have been removed as the owners of Miss USA, so that's good news. Another thing that they were considering was if Arbany, the Miss USA winner, should be able to compete at Miss Universe, which is next month. So a lot is up in the air right now. So I'm looking forward to seeing what comes out of this on Tuesday and I will keep you all posted on what comes of it. Now, a lot of you are asking what us contestants want out of this investigation. And really, we just want confirmation that there was obvious favoritism this year. And if there was a breach of contract that the winner isn't able to compete at Miss Universe because she broke her contract and that is obviously against the rules and not fair. So if that is found to be true, then the first runner up, I guess, would go compete at Miss Universe and the rest of us would get our money back for competing in a pageant that we thought we had a fair chance and we actually didn't. If I did an actual accounting of how much money I spent on pageants, it would be thoroughly embarrassing. So I'm not gonna do that, but I will say, People totally underestimate how much pageants cost and it costs thousands of thousands of thousands. And this video is getting pretty long, so I'm gonna make a part two. But nonetheless, I still believe that everything happens for a reason. And one of the big takeaways that I've gotten out of this experience is to always read your contracts, which as someone in the legal profession, I knew better and I should have known this. And you know what, I did read the contract and I did see that there was a provision in there that stated that Crystal Stewart and the Miss Brand organization had every right to override the final judge's scores at Miss USA. And there was nothing that us contestants could do about it. That was a part of the contract that we had to sign to be able to compete in Miss USA. So it's either you sign this and you agree that they can handpick the winner or you don't get to compete at Miss USA. So really, what was I supposed to do? Looking back on this, I, I guess I was hopeful that, you know, it was going to be a fair competition. So I kind of just overlooked that clause. In the Sorry. Overlooked that clause in the contract. Um, but looking back, I probably should have pointed that out and not agreed to that provision. This is a hard lesson learned for me and the other contestants to always read your contracts. So if you are a model influencer pageant girl you know whatever and you are signing a contract please reach out sorry that's my dog please reach out to an attorney a professional to overlook this agreement for you because a lot of times they throw in a bunch of legal jargon in these contracts that is not plain english to the average person you have no idea what you're signing so it's always important to have a professional overlook this for you. I am not yet a licensed attorney, but I can definitely put you in contact with someone who is. So if you need a contract looked at, reach out to me and I'll connect you with my people. So long story short, not much to update on for now. I'll have more for you next week, but uh, main takeaway is to always read your contracts. I had to rush to finish getting ready, but here's the final look. I love you guys. I'll talk to you soon. This morning, the Miss USA class of 2022 was silenced and ignored by the organization that claims to empower strong women. Let's talk about the Miss USA investigation results or lack thereof. So this morning, the Miss USA contestants met with the president of the Miss Universe organization, Paula Shugart, who 
ironically enough, recused herself from this investigation. Um, so that's weird that she was the one delivering these results. The CEO of the Miss Universe organization, Amy Emmerich, is the one who we have been in contact with the past few months leading up to this investigation and throughout this investigation, she is nowhere to be found. This morning, we thought we would get answers, but we didn't. Instead, we were muted, literally muted on the Zoom call. We were silenced, no questions allowed, and the call lasted about 10 minutes. We were all hung up on and just left hanging. Our questions that we had submitted ahead of time were not answered. Um, we weren't allowed to ask questions. We were just told there was no rigging. Um, which that wasn't even <laughs> what we were looking into. We were simply told to stay patient as the investigation is ongoing. Meanwhile, the pageant happened almost three months ago. We were promised results by Thanksgiving. Then we were promised results by Christmas. We were promised weekly updates, all of which is falling apart. We have not been getting our weekly updates. It's obviously past Christmas and we still don't have answers. The Miss Universe pageant is happening next month and we still don't know whether or not the current Miss USA broke her contract, which is what this whole investigation was supposed to be about. They are telling us that what they're investigating is not even close to what we had asked for. There was no mention of this in our results call, this update that we had this morning, which was a total waste of time, lasted approximately 10 minutes, if that, and we don't know what's going on. I will say the contestant group chat, we are all very upset and confused. So this, this won't be the last you've heard from us. Let's just leave it at that. So with that, under very suspicious circumstances, Arvini Gabriel went on to represent the USA at Miss Universe 2022, which was held in New Orleans on January 14th, 2023. There's no denying that Arvini was an exceptional performer and standout contestant at this Miss Universe edition. Her swimsuit performances were mesmerizing and her fashion knowledge really showed in the incredible uniqueness of the gown she chose to wear. Whether or not the favoritism allegations had merit or whether or not you know she was closely associated with a Miss USA judge who was also associated with the Miss Texas USA pageant, Arbany really performed exceptionally well at Miss Universe 2022. Near the end, of course, when the question rounds came on, Arbany received a question which came down to if she could change any Miss Universe rule, what would she change? And of course, she answered that the age limit should be looked at. And surprise, surprise, this year Miss Universe got rid of the upper age limit altogether. And, you know, it still perplexes me how she so serendipitously chose the exact right thing to say. But before we move on to Arbany's actual reign as Miss Universe, I also do want to give a special shout out to her national costume, which gave me and my boyfriend the biggest laugh. In the beginning of Arbany's reign, the new Miss Universe owner, Kun An, was always around, not to mention Anne tried to make it so that all of the Miss Universe top three and even top five would be overly involved throughout the year. Luckily, both of those things fizzled out eventually. And has other things to focus on now, after all. The first place Arbany visited as Miss Universe was New York City, as is custom for a newly crowned Miss Universe. Of course, Miss Universe has also always worked with UC 1000 Vitamin in Indonesia, so that's where Arbany went next. Because the new owner of Miss Universe is from Thailand, naturally that's where they went next. She also visited Malaysia and Vietnam. Basically, Southeast Asia was thoroughly blessed with Arbany's presence during the start of her reign. All the while, Arbany was advocating sustainability um, through clothing and literally designing her own outfits and sharing the process on social media. Say what you want, but I really think that she is very talented. She also visited Los Angeles, of course, her hometown of Houston, Texas, all the while helping out with charity work. And of course, she also attended Coachella. Personally, I don't get the hype around Coachella, but I mean, you do you. Of course, being Filipina American, it was only a matter of time before she visited the Philippines. Like, 
I mean, it's like a second homecoming for her, you know? That's probably what it was. Arbany also visited Guatemala, the Netherlands, and of course, my birth country of South Africa. Arbany was a judge at Miss South Africa 2023, and she looked so freaking amazing while doing it. She was also in Honduras, Belize, Mexico, France, and this year's Miss Universe host country, El Salvador. Altogether, Arbany was able to check 14 countries off of her bucket list, some of which she visited multiple times, all while looking amazing whilst doing both the glamorous and arduous jobs that come with being Miss Universe. And now, in the twilight of Arbany's 10-month reign, I cannot help but feel content. You know, Arbany's reign might have started out, you know, under this cloud of scandal but i definitely think that she did the job and she did the job well she was a good miss universe and i definitely feel like you know arbany did a splendid job as miss universe let me know what you guys think about arbany i like the fact that she um made her own outfits very interesting and then she shared with us the process of making these outfits she definitely has this greater appreciation of fashion um, which made it so much more fun to watch as she traveled around the world getting dressed by all of these amazing people around the world especially when she came to South Africa and she was dressed by South African designers for Miss South Africa and you can tell that she truly appreciates the process of fashion and I think that was wonderful you know she's truly also very passionate about sustainability in fashion she did the jobs as miss universe as was required of her and i thought that she was a great miss universe so let me know what you guys think thank you so much for watching if you haven't already please subscribe and i will see you in the next one bye